Becky Callis, the Executive Director of Empire State Orchestra. I am really excited to introduce you to the best of our 2T Music Festival, which we broadcast back in December. One of the silver linings this year has been the fact that we've been able to record all of our performances. And what we've done for you today is to take the special moments, the highlights from the 2D Music Festival and put them all together in one piece so that you can relive some of those magical moments and perhaps enjoy some moments that you didn't get a chance to see the first time round. So we're very excited about this compilation of all of those wonderful musical moments. We've also packaged it with some new special things that you haven't had a chance to see. Some special reflections from students um, that, from the experience that they've had this year and from some of our conductors. Of course, none of this would be possible without the hard work and dedication of so many individuals. So a huge thank you to our staff and conductors for all of the creative energy that they put into this project. And thank you to our production team, to Open Stage Media, to Proctors for hosting all of what we've been doing this season. A special gratitude to our production leaders, uh, Griffin Bengraff, for his creative, amazing insight and abilities, and to Justin Cook for coordinating this entire process. I want to thank our donors and our parents and families for being there for us this year and helping make this such a success, and a special gratitude to our students because they have persevered through a very difficult season. We have to be honest, this has been anything but normal. Um, and I've been just so impressed to see our kids arriving to rehearsals and putting up with circumstances that are not quite ideal, uh, playing six feet and even 10 feet apart in spaces that are acoustically not amazing and yet they do it with a smile under their masks, and it's been really impressive and um, just heartwarming to see how much that they have learned this year. And I look forward to see how much they will learn as the months go on and the growth that they will experience between now and the spring. So again, thank you for joining us, and I hope that you enjoyed the highlights that we bring you today from our 2D Music Festival. Enjoy. say my favorite part of the festival was being able to see my grandmother watch the concert finally. It was a lot of hard work and she was never able to make it to a concert before. This was the first one she was able to see. That was really important to me. 
I feel like just having that teamwork and that effort being shown to a wider audience was great. I really hope we do keep this after the pandemic or whatever our new future is going to be. Because I feel like we can get music to more people, more communities. It would be great.
We're so glad you're here and hope you're enjoying the best of concert from the 2020-21 season. If you can support SEO, we ask you to please go to seo.org backslash donate and make a contribution to support all of these wonderful young musicians, music programming, and more broadly, music education. Thank you in advance and enjoy the rest of the concert.
as a lot of you have known all across not just New York and the Capital District, but the country, making music has been really interesting. And uh, at Isio, a year ago, you know, when this all happened, we had no idea how we we're actually going to be able to make live music happen again with the idea of uh, remote learning and social distancing. So that was kind of a challenge. And uh, we kind of went into this not really knowing, but just kind of experimenting and coming up with just open minds and seeing how we could proceed. And I think some of the great challenges I was, I was proud of the students is just overcoming, uh, you know, how to play with masks and how to sit, you know, six or 12 feet apart in straight lines and formats, you know, one that they're not used to, but also in an ensemble, a lot of them are new and they've never played together. So they're, they're in a, you know, with a new conductor and they're also with new students. That's tough enough already, but then to throw into uh, the bind, everything that we've gone through this year, to make it happen we get to that first rehearsal and everybody's just sitting there like wondering can we actually do this and we had music and we put it all out um and it was impressive to see the students kind of embrace you know what we did you know putting some stuff online and smaller ensembles and the independence and they grew and um they really especially like um about week six seven into the process they really started to grow and you know make friends but also make music uh, in an environment situation they've never been used to. And I think the greatest joy I, you know, I saw was doing a concert in Proctor's and we did our concert. Um, and again, we're in this beautiful hall, the beautiful ceiling on this gorgeous stage and a hall and there's nobody in it. And I'm telling the students, it's kind of like the baseball players when they, when they would play games, you know, over the summer, you know, football, these big empty stadiums. And, you know, this is where the professionalism comes in, you know, you, you know, you love to have the audience. We love to have that thrill. And, uh, but we don't have that feedback of an audience hearing us, but we still played. We made music. So just, just pretend they're there and just act like they're there clapping for you and smile and, you know, do your bows and everything else. And, and they did it. And, um, I guess and the best takeaway I, I came out of this this fall with with the students. And I, I, it was not my own words. It's actually one of my violinists came up to me and said this, and then uh, several other students later. But after we made that recording, they took a look at the space, and they this the student came to me and said, "Wow, it's not just a concert this time. It's like a real privilege that we got to play together." I said, "Absolutely," because and I said it in my intros that at that point most of the world hadn't been doing live large group performances at this point, maybe some small combos, but large ensembles hadn't put a concert together yet. Um, and I'm not talking about just schools or SEO, I'm talking about worldwide, every organization was struggling with this. And that takeaway at the end was that they, it wasn't just about the notes and the music for the students, it was that we got to play together. We got to be in the same room making live music, not somebody splicing it together, but we made live music with 30 people on the stage at the same time, interacting together in real time. And that that's what we do this for is, you know, obviously for the audience and move people, but also to move ourselves and to be part of something bigger than just the individual. So hope you enjoy our performances and the re remainder of the videos. And, uh, thank you for listening to me for a few minutes.
Throughout the pandemic, SU has been a bright spot, and being able to rehearse and record under the direction of David Fisk and Lee Russo at Proctor's for the SU 2D Youth Music Festival has been an amazing experience. For the 2D Music Festival, we recorded and rehearsed four songs, among them being jazz standards such as Have Yourself a Merry Little Christmas and Cornbread. We were able to improvise over these, rehearse through different sections, and get the feedback of our instructors. We were then able to run through these tunes at Proctor's, being professionally recorded. Then, a few weeks later, we were able to see our performance being played back at the 2D Youth Music Festival, which was an extremely rewarding experience. In 2021, as a graduating senior, I hope to be at a college that I love and to be playing and gigging as much as possible. What I'm looking forward to in the upcoming concert cycle is being able to play with a great group with great leaders.
and thank you for tuning into our Best of the Tutti Festival. I wanted to tell you a little bit about the challenges that we had and the reason why we ended up uh, recording the concerts the way we did. Because what happened was that we were in the middle of a pandemic when we realized that all of our musicians, young musicians, were eager to play music in person. It is true that we were able to do a lot of things virtually from home and using technology to accomplish our mission. But it was time for us to get together and feel the energy of other musicians around us to do what we do, which is play in a physical, real ensemble. We were very grateful and privileged to have the space at Proctor's in Schenectady to rehearse with our young musicians. They were able to provide us with the best air filtration possible and with the enough spaces and big enough spaces to fit our orchestras. So our orchestras are very big. That's why we needed to split each of the big orchestras in three chamber orchestras or small orchestras. We decided to call those small chamber orchestras the classical the romantic and the string chamber orchestras because of the configuration of those ensembles. Uh, historically, in the classical period, when Mozart, Beethoven, uh, Stamitz, and even uh, Haydn were writing the first symphonies, it, it is called the classical period in the 1700s, and the nature of the orchestra was being defined in the classical period and they would write primarily for strings plus winds and that's why we had our classical orchestra that has strings, woodwinds and a couple of brass instruments which is the normal instrumentation for a classical symphony by Haydn, Mozart, Beethoven. The Romantic Orchestra is now a little bit bigger and in the 1800s, mid-1800s, uh, orchestras were evolving as, as well as the instruments, you know, the trombones, tubas were incorporated in, into the orchestra. And then composers of the Romantic period like Brahms, Tchaikovsky, even Dvorak, started to write for this bigger instrumentation. So the big difference with, between the classical orchestra and the Romantic orchestra is that the Romantic orchestra incorporates low brass as a trombone and tubas. Also, harp, piano, and more percussion than in, classic, in the classical period. And then the string orchestra, uh, it is self-explanatory, which has been a very uh, famous and used format across uh, music history. That is an, an orchestra made of string instruments, violins, violas, cellos, and double basses. We are going to showcase all of our ensembles, including the symphony orchestra, repertory orchestra, string orchestra, concertino strings orchestra, all the percussion ensemble, the jazz ensemble, in a, in a festival that we are going to host in our website. I am very much looking forward to, to that concert because there is a lot of repertoire opportunities that this small chamber orchestra's configurations allow us to do and I am very excited for you to join us. Thank you very much.
Thank you.